Hey everyone and welcome to the truth behind Chlorinator. Now today we're going to take all of my knowledge in the hobby for the last 15 years that I've acquired through owning a store and that kind of stuff and then apply some research I've done to back it up a little bit and that's just because I want to get this right and so know that this is from experience but we're going to hit it with a little bit of facts as well. So today we're talking about a Dechlorinator. I use Fritz Complete. It's my favorite one only because the way we sell it, we put a pump head on it, and I like ease, right? And you'll see why that might be important later in the video when it comes to a dechlorinator. So what does a dechlorinator do? Let's start there. So most municipalities have chlorine or chloramine in their water, right? So that what that we're doing there is keeping bacteria out of the water so that humans and animals don't get sick. Well, at the levels that we use, typically that harms our aquariums. Beneficial bacteria could even burn some gills and and other microfauna we might want in there, right? So we need to eliminate that as best we can. Dechlorinator is the best way we've found to do that. Now, dechlorinator typically is made up of a few things. It's got a few goals is what they're trying to do. First one is break down chlorine or break down chloramine. So, and I'm gonna read this because I always mispronounce it incorrectly, sodium thiosulfate is like this, imagine like a, a big thing of like rock salt. That's what it looks like, right? It's a salt that you put it in and it breaks the chemical compound down of chlorine and chloramine, okay? So when you're buying a dechlorinator, basically you're getting that dissolved into water for the most part, thus far in the video, okay? So after that, if we have chlorine and that's all we've got, that's fine. We've broken it down, great, fish are happy, we're happy, we move on. If we have chloramine though, once we break that bond with the chloramine, we get we break down the chlorine part of it, but we're left with some ammonia, right? And if we have a dechlorinator that only breaks down the chlorine part of it, it actually will leave us with ammonia left in the aquarium. Now, you as a hobbyist, you've been around for a while, you probably know ammonia is not good for fish, all right? So we need to do something with that. And something like uh, the Complete or Prime or Amquel or you know, there's so many dechlorinators out there, pick one, right? Most of them are going to have another additive in there that is going to bind up the ammonia temporarily. Now, what does that mean? That means instead of being this horrible thing that burns your fish, for a period of up to 24 hours typically, and I say up to, it will bond a chemical with it and make it so it's not in a harmful state. However, we can still break it down with our filtration. All right, so that's a good thing. That's one of the reasons why we need some filtration in our water is to help break even that ammonia down. Not so much even the fish, we do that as well, but when we do water changes, okay? So in that process though, we have some more results or more effects. One of them is the reducing agent that we have in there, and that's what's reducing down the chlorine or the chloramine down, is going to um, oxidize or use up some oxygen as well. So what does that mean? That means like in this aquarium here, we've got oxygen, fish are okay, they're doing fine. If I do a big water change uh, and we put a bunch of dechlorinator in there, it's going to take care of the chlorine or the chloramine, but then it might also temporarily take up some of that oxygen. And that's where we can get uh, into some trouble if we have an aquarium that is already low on oxygen. And a lot of people have that and they don't know it. Uh, one of the biggest culprits would be a planted aquarium. Because we focus on trying to keep CO2 levels high, that usually means we're not running an air stone, which I personally recommend, by the way, uh, or we're not running a lot of surface agitation. And so while plants grow, they do release oxygen, which is great, but at night they consume oxygen. So imagine it's Saturday morning, you wake up and you go, ooh, let's do the maintenance on the planet tank and the lights aren't even on yet. And you, you kick them on and you change 30% of that water. You put the dechlorinator back in. You might've already been starting pretty low in oxygen. So if your supply water has a bunch of oxygen in it, good, that's gonna help out a bit. But if it was already low in oxygen, like maybe you're on a well or something like that, it might further even deplete it. So the water you bring in might even have even less oxygen, which would be bad. And then we're gonna use a dechlorinator that might take away even more. So you can see how we can get into some distress here. Uh, discus tanks can also run to this, especially when you start looking at uh, the way at which we keep fish. Maybe a goldfish or a discus tank, we might do a 90% water change. And then we bring in water that doesn't have as much oxygen, and then we put chemicals in it that use up the oxygen that was there, and we can run into this problem, right? We can kill off bacteria, we can kill off fish, we can run into all these bad things. So the other thing we wanna talk about is dosing, right? So like this, most, most dechlorinators out there 
are like uh, one milliliter per 10 gallons of water, okay? Now what makes that a little bit confusing is different municipalities have different amounts of chlorine in it. So like our water has almost none. It's almost unmeasurable, which is nice. I don't have to use very much. Whereas uh, maybe in California, in LA, I know there's parts where it's like, or, or Vegas, really. Like if you've ever been to Vegas and you taste water at a restaurant, you can almost like, oh, it's like, it's like chlorine's in here. Like I can almost smell it and taste it, right? And so that would be a lot of chlorine and chloramine in there and we would need to use more to chlorinator. Now, what is a manufacturer to do when everyone's got a different level of chlorine and most people will never test it? They build a formula that will basically work for anyone and that's why you get these real ambiguous directions of, you know, this, I, I love this bottle in particular because I think it captures it perfectly of the dilemma as a hobbyist. And it says, for best results, add Fritz Complete water before adding it to your aquarium. It's been proven that it's two to five minutes to actually break down all of uh, the chlorine and chloramine. So based on the dechlorinator. So at worst, five minutes, at best, two minutes. I myself added directly to aquarium, never had a problem, but that's a side tangent there. If treating an aquarium for ammonia, nitrite, or nitrate, base the dose on the aquarium volume. Well, that makes sense. Like, oh, if I have an 800 gallon aquarium, I need a dose for 800 gallons because I've got one of those things that are high, either ammonia, nitrite, or nitrate. Okay, I can figure that out. For extremely high levels of chloramine or nitrite, dosage can be repeated or increased up to five times in a 24 hour period. So if I was to put 80 squirts in there and treat, you know, I did a big water change and, or I had really high nitrite and I wanna bind that up for my filtration. I put 80 squirts in there, I can do that up to five times. So that means we can go really potent. Each time we're taking up some oxygen, that can be problematic, we gotta be aware of that. That's why I run air stones. Uh, but you've got that huge range. Now the problem you run into is when you are in a low oxygen situation already and then you start taking it out by changing water and then you take more out of it by uh, putting a dechlorinator in. All of those can be problematic. So, and sometimes there's things like aloe vera and stuff in a dechlorinator that you might be using just to heal the slime coat on a fish. So there's other benefits too. Some buffer uh, the water and most of us use it out of fear. So the truth is, if we're really fearful of what's going on, we should test. We should know what's in there and we should figure out, okay, well, I know I'm changing 30% of the water. I have two parts per million chlorine going back in. When I dose three pumps for 30 gallons, because maybe I had a 100 gallon tank, I changed 30%, does that knock it out? Test again, it does, great, now I know I'm doing it right. Or should I be dosing more? Is it really heavy chlorine or chloramine and I gotta dose five pumps, right? So the truth is we need to do some testing and we're a little bit lazy and the manufacturers have catered to us, which is nice, uh, but we should know that the precautions to take are don't run out of oxygen, keep an eye on those fish, and do things to hedge your bets. If, if you could do anything, even if you hated an airstone or something like that, just running an airstone for the next three or four hours while you're changing a water, uh, or while you're changing water, would do wonders. Uh, not only are you doing things in the aquarium that's stressing the fish out, they're gonna breathe faster, you're bringing water back in, you're putting in chemicals, and keep in mind, other chemicals do this too, like fertilizers and other stuff we typically wanna add to our aquarium, so we can create an environment that actually works. The last thing I'll touch on is, do you even need to be changing water? So if you don't have high nitrates or high hormones or a reason, oh my water is so murky I can't see through it. If you don't have a reason, there's so many of us as hobbyists that we just change water once a week out of habit. And with that, now that we know like all these things that could be going on when we change water, and maybe we've identified, maybe that's not all beneficial, like we, you know, we're opening ourselves up to some risk each time, Maybe we wanna lessen that risk and maybe we wanna do it, okay, I can go to every other week or once a month or something like that based on your stocking levels. And the key takeaway here I think is test your water and you'll know what your nitrates are, you'll know what your nitrites are, you can know what your chlorine is. And then a lot of people will test their water, do the maintenance and walk away. The best thing you could do is follow up maybe a couple hours later, test your water again and go, based on the work that I did, what was the result? Because a lot of us are just going in going, I did my maintenance, I'm good. And that's like cleaning one room in your house without opening any other doors. And you don't realize like, oh, the kids are in that room. It's, it's a disaster in there. And because we don't check up on it, we don't know. And that's one of the biggest takeaways there. So I would recommend using the least amount of dechlorinator that you can kind of get away with that you feel comfortable with after testing. And two, uh, testing a bunch. That, those are very key. And as we are in the hobby longer and longer and longer, we test less and less and less. There'll be a whole other video about testing 
Um, but that's the truth behind a chlorinator is that's how it's working. That's the potential risks we have. And know that for the most part, they're all the same. They're very similar, whether you're, oh, I only use Prime. Oh, I only use uh, Amquil. Oh, I only use Akari Ultimate. I only use Fritz Complete. The reality is it's like saying you only eat this burger joint. They're all burger joints. They're all pretty much getting a job done. You might like one slightly better than the other, but they'll get, you know, if you're hungry and you're on the road, guess what? They're going to fill your stomach. And this is the same thing. In a pinch, you'll be glad you have any dechlorinator and uh, just consider yourself, consider yourself lucky that you have one and you know how to use it. Focus on that. Decipher those directions. Hop on their website. seachem has got a very long Q&A about what theirs can do and can't do. Binding metals, not binding metals. And a lot of that might be too much for you. So pick one that resonates with you and good luck. Now that you know the truth about dechlorinators, check out the description and the pinned comment below. We have a link where you put in your email and we'll email you an infographic on how to make water changes super duper simple and easy to manage.